Well, hello there. It's Cat Lady Justin, and this is the Kitty Boss, where we pick, pamper, and protect your practically perfect pussycat for a lifetime of unconditional love. I'm back again, live as well as recorded, and joining me will be Dr. Rachel Geller, the, one of the world's foremost cat behaviorists and one of our cat behaviorist friends, who we will talk about, I think I said cat New Year's resolutions, because uh, it's the new year. It's 2023. This is, will be our first broadcast of the year and our first podcast of the year, podcasts. And so I think we'll talk about what does that mean? What do we mean by that? So without further ado, I'd like to bring on Dr. Rachel Geller. Happy New Year to you and Happy welcome. Happy New Year. Best, best wishes for a wonderful new year filled with purrs. Oh, yes. Thank you. And uh, for anyone watching the last one and it got a little glitchy and all that, I apologize. We still talked about a lot of really great stuff, so you should still listen to it. But uh, it was my computer uh, messing up because it was just crossed that line into obsolescence, obsolete. And so I now have a new one. So hopefully this one goes smoothly, knock on wood, and lasts me at least a few more years. So that's that. So I wanted to get that out of the way. Now, I wanted to remind anybody who's watching this live, this obviously doesn't apply to you if you're listening to this at a later date or watching this at a later date. But if you're watching this live right now, uh, which means uh, the 13th of January, Friday the 13th, ooh, uh, 2023, and you'd like to leave us comments, which I encourage you to do because as you know, we answer almost every question and we appreciate any comments and feedback please click on that little link that StreamYard throws up there in the in the stream so that I can see who you are. Otherwise, it's a mystery and, and I don't get to find out who's making the comment. Uh, or if you'd like to remain anonymous, that's okay too. So uh, I think I kind of labeled this particular episode, New Year's Resolutions for Cats, Cat New Year's Resolutions. Now, that was kind of funny because obviously a cat doesn't make New Year's resolutions, or maybe they do. I don't know. Maybe my maybe Emily says, "Oh, I'm going to lose a kilogram this year" or something. Uh, but uh, in general, I don't think so. But I was thinking more along the lines of what sort of New Year's resolutions or what things can we do anew for our cats to renew our I don't want to say vows, but our commitments, our uh, appreciation, our love, our pampering and protection of our cats because there's a lot of things that we talk about over and over and over again because they're so important to do not because they're complicated but because they're important and it's easy to kind of forget so i'll tell you one thing for me uh just just one just one big thing for me is i am planning aiming and intending to play more with my cats this year because we talk about that all the time how important it is you told teach how important it is to play with your cats. And I know, but I admit that I tend to get really busy. And while I love to stroke them, cuddle them, kiss them and all that kind of stuff, playing with them mm, doesn't always happen consistently. So I'm going to, I'm going to say that this year I'm going to consistently play with them uh, at least once a day. And so far I've kept it. So, so that's, that's pretty good. So that's what I mean by that. So how about you, Dr. Rachel? Is there anything that you'd like, you personally would like to commit to when it comes to your cats this year? Well, first, I want to commend you for making that New Year's resolution that you're going to add more play to your cat's life. So anybody who ever tunes into anything that I do knows that um, I'm a huge advocate of play and using it for so many reasons, not just because you know, not only because it's so important in the cat's world and cats are natural born hunters and they need that opportunity to hunt and play and catch, but it can also be used as a um, bonding tool between you and your cat. And it's also a great behavior modification tool. So while I have the platform on play, I'm gonna just sneak one little thing in there. And that is play needs to resemble a hunt. So what does that mean? You can't just sit there and wave the thing around. You can't, um, you need to give your cat a chance to give that prey drive, um, get it activated. So many people say, well, I took out the toy and I moved it and my cat didn't go for it. So he doesn't like to play, I put the toy away. But some cats like to, you know, have that hunting sequence where they wanna 
size it up, strategize, think about what they want to do. So give your cat more than like a minute to maybe get interested in that toy. And end every play session with a final wind down. The cat is get the cat um, is causing the prey to get tired. The prey is getting injured. The prey dies. Again, simulate a hunt. Let that cat catch the, capture that prey. And here's the important part. Immediately after that capture, provide your cat with a little bit of food or a treat. Because play, like I said, should simulate a hunt. So your cat needs to get that little bit of food after his hunt to really complete the play session. Now, if your cat, if your cat's only stimulation in his life is your ankles as you walk by or knocking things off the dresser or the table, that's a sign that he's not getting enough opportunities to play and to really get something and capture it. So play with your cat um, once or twice a day, like Justin is going to do. Make it um, realistic as if the cat is really involved in a hunt. Let that cat get the toy at the end, get that catch, final capture, food. This is the way to have a really beneficial play session. Now for my personal um, New Year's resolution, I really um, want to commit to um, getting myself out there more and not only um, answering people's questions and being there to help adopters and being there to help shelters, but I am really want to um, create programs and create content that other people can use without me always being there. Because there's only one of me and there's a lot of people who need cat help. So I'm really working this year on creating templates, creating guides, creating recordings where people can take some of the suggestions that I have, run with it and work with it on their own rather than me um, needing to be there all the time. I think that's like my next step. And that is fantastic. So I uh, commend you for that as well and really actually look forward to and I'm excited to, to see them, to see what you are generating this year as your gifts to the world. So I wanted to add one thing to that because I know that our friends, our mutual friends uh, who produce uh, incredible, all natural, human safe uh, cat supplements, which have made all the difference for my cats and thousands, hundreds of thousands of other cat owners across the United States and a few of us here uh, who live in Europe as well, they actually, I think, came out with some kind of new or a little cat toy thingy. Uh, so if anybody, just saying that, if anybody wants information about that, I at, just DM me and I'll, I'll pass you on to them. They're not today's guests. They have been guests before. So I don't want to spend too much time on that. But for anyone who wants some really special super duper toys uh, for their cats, uh, that's, uh, that's, of course, an option I'd like to offer there. Just, you know, send me a DM and I'll, I'll point you in their direction. However, uh, I don't want anybody to think that you got to spend a fortune uh, or really anything for your cat's toys. As many people know, most people know, uh, you, you buy your cat a toy and sometimes it likes the box it came in a lot better than it likes the actual toy. There is a toy that uh, Dr. Rachel uh, turned me on to that is like the most amazing cat toy that both my cats like. Uh, and it's called the Cat Dancer. It's cheap, or as we say here in England, cheap as chips. Uh, it's very cheap. Uh, it's and it's just like the simplest little thing. This like wire on it. I mean, the fishing pole cat toys most cats like, but this thing on the wire, this little cardboard on a wire, for some reason they go crazy for it. So you really don't need to spend a lot of money on on cat toys. Of course, there are some that you know, differences in cats and some cats like this better, some cats like that better. But this one seems to be almost the universally loved by uh, cats. So I wanted to bring that one up because it's really, really cool. And so uh, remember, just, you know, if you want to find out about the super duper toys, just send me a DM. Uh, and if otherwise, just look up the cat dancer. I got mine. Uh, I got two of them on Amazon. And uh, they're available probably everywhere as well. Yeah. We have a comment, which I think is lovely. So I'm going to post it up here and read it to you. It says, your cats are your family. You have to keep your promises to them. For the past 20 years, early January has been difficult for me. 
on January 4, 2003, I had to put down my cat, AC. Another cat is, uh, okay, so that's where that particular comment ends. Uh, and that, I, again, apologize. I don't know who specifically posted that because this uh, program doesn't show me that. It just says Facebook user. Unless you click a, that link that um, StreamYard uh, posts there, uh, which enables it to reveal who you are. So again, I'm happy with anonymous uh, posts. That's not a problem. But I just don't want you to think that I'm like, you know, passing you <laughs> over and not really caring to pay attention who you are. So whoever you are, uh, of course, it's 2003, a long time ago. Condolences on that. Uh, it's always difficult to lose our pets. We also have a uh, Dr. Rachel. And I have a mutual friend who's a very renowned pet bereavement specialist. So if you <laughs> require her services, although after so many years, maybe you don't, but if you do just, of course, let us know. She's in the group as well, the Kitty Boss Facebook group. So we would love to, to connect you with someone like that if you need that help to get over it. Uh, the continuation of the comment reads, she had me for 19 years and was about one year old when we found each other. She loved toys and the cartons they came in. There were times I think I got more benefits than mm -hmm. she. And that's, of course, another lovely comment there, because it, ain't it true that sometimes who's benefiting the most? Uh, it's you so true. No, or it's Kitty? So true. It's so true. So many times when I work with people to try to get them you know, to play with their cats and they, they're hesitant, oh, I don't really have the time. Um, you know, the, the, they don't always realize what a great and powerful tool play can be. And the beautiful thing about interactive play is that you're, you know, when you're using the fishing pole type toy and providing the hunt for your cat, you are part of that whole game. You are part of that whole experience. And when that cat gets that capture and he's releasing all of his feel good chemicals and he's feeling so great and I'm a conqueror and I'm king of my territory, you are part of all of that. So all of those positive associations with the hunt and the play and being successful are associated with you as well. So play can just be such a very powerful bonding tool. And yes, the cat dancer toy, they don't pay me to say anything. As Justin said, it really is one terrific toy. Cats just go crazy for it. And it is, it's very inexpensive. It's like $1.99 um, at most places. So as Justin pointed out, you can go, you know, you can go crazy. And if you have the means and get all kinds of expensive and you know, high level things for your cats, but the cat dancer works very well um, on its own too. And um, think about how your cat likes to play and what your cat enjoys. You know, some cats like the feathers, some cats are always looking up. So maybe they might want a toy that resembles a bird. Some cats like to be stealth and stop. So maybe they just want a ribbon of fleece that you can move along the floor. So before you buy the toy, take your personal cat into consideration and see what you know, what might entice that cat the most. Um, and last, if you're, you know, think about things that go on during your day and maybe you can incorporate play into it. Like sometimes when I'm doing laundry and I'm going up the stairs, I'll tie a long ribbon of fleece um, to my belt loops. And as I'm walking around doing things I need to do anyway, my cats are chasing it and having a good old time. So there's always ways we can sort of inject play um, with our cats that, as Justin mentioned, are not that expensive and very easy to implement. Oh, yeah. And that's uh, and what else is really cool is uh, is you could do it in certain things, of course, that are built around you. So I know some people mind. I don't. So when I make the bed, the cats love it because it's a time where they help me uh, help me, quote unquote, uh, where they they'll jump up after the sheets off or the blanket. And, and it's almost like it takes like three times as long to make the bed because the cats are there and all that. But I don't mind because it's fun for me, too. And it may it's just it's just a moment we have together. So when I when I make the bed, when I not when I change the sheets and all of that, that's an extra little play time for them. That's uh, unusual. Some people don't like that. But for me, again, I don't mind. It's just fun. Uh, so I don't have as many boundaries with my cats as some people. Some people do have more boundaries, whereas with me, we really don't have many at all. Uh, and so that to me is an, and, and so you can get creative with that. So in around things that you don't mind, you can just make that a play thing, even though it's not designed to be, it can be, uh, ribbons as well. You know, we just, 
uh, finish the holiday season with uh, presents. And um, presents have wrapping paper and ribbon a lot of times. And sometimes cats love that. I mean, I, I know when I unwrapped some presents, the first thing the cat did was jump on the wrapping paper. <laughs> uh, forget the box it came in because it was a box for them, actually. It was a cat cat gift. Uh, and so, but no, they, they they just sat on that. So I'm like, oh, okay, that's that's fine. So I actually left it out for a few extra days instead of throwing it away right away just because they liked playing with it and sitting on it and whatever. And same thing with the ribbons. They really like the ribbons. So, you know, maybe I don't need to go out and buy a brand new cat toy. I can use the ribbon from yeah. my Christmas present. So there's so many creative and cheap and cheerful ways that you can incorporate play into your cats that there really isn't much excuse not to do it. Uh, so that's why uh, I said, yeah, at least for me, that uh, I'll commit to playing more with the cats and all of that. Yeah, it's such a it's such a powerful bonding tool. And the best part of it is um, as the as the person who wrote in the Facebook page, the best part of it is you and your cat are just having fun. You know, it's just a really nice activity to do together with your cat. Um, and one more thing on the, you know, sometimes getting creative. I, I remember one time with one of my cats, I noticed when I was flossing my teeth and using the dental floss, the cat was playing with the with the other end of the floss that was kind of like dangling. And I realized, ooh, he's finding this really fun. Um, so the next time I floss my teeth the next night, I like did an extra long piece of floss and made sure I got my cat and started flossing. And sure enough, he's playing and playing, having a grand old time with a dental floss at the other end. Now, <laughs> here's like a really no cost, you know, thing to play with your cat because I was buying the dental floss anyway. And talk about mutual benefits. I mean, I had like the best dental reports ever because I was using more and more floss and we wanted to let him play and he was having fun. Now, warning, warning, you don't want to just leave gentle floss around your house and because, you know, it's not supervised as something a cat could eat and ingest. But if you're right there, same with the ribbon, those things are definitely, you know, fine to do. So, you know, sometimes it's a little bit of creativity, a little bit of ingenuity, but I find most people, if they put their minds to it, could definitely find that. 10 to 15 minutes to play with their cat. Yeah. And it's, it's really not that bad because you can incorporate it like that, you know, as long as you're careful with things like dental floss strings or, you know, or whatever crafting that you do, as long as you're careful with it to, yes. to supervise them, it's not, it's not a big deal. And uh, we don't need to, you know, worry too much about them. Just don't, you know, leave the thing lying around, like right. you said. Right. Yeah. So, so that's, you know, that's really cool. Now, you know, we, we just, finished the holiday season. And so we had already covered fireworks and guests and all that kind of stuff and parties and everything. So now uh, we're really in the what's what's now and uh, pretty much the major part of the winter uh, where it's cold in most places. Although I'll, I'll have to say this year is not quite as cold as in previous years, it was for like a week or something where it was frigid, but today it's actually not that cold. So, uh, and it hasn't been for a while. So I, I don't know about that whole, that's a whole other debate climate. And this is not a <laughs> podcast on climate and all of that, but, uh, but it's just, uh, it is winter. And it's, of course, in some places it's not winter, but if it will be. So I'd like to talk about the cold and talk about the winter and the things that we should watch out for, be careful of, and really do so that we protect our pets properly for that lifetime of unconditional love in the winter and cold weather. So um, uh, so here's some things that you really want to mm -hmm. make sure to do or, or not to do. And I'll do like a bullet point. So yeah. space, so space heaters. Um, you know, many people is too cold. They they want to save energy, they want to save um, money. And so they get space heaters for, so um, they can heat up the places that they're in the house rather than the entire house. So really make sure if, you if you're getting a space heater that your cat um, is not going to tip it over or play with it or inspect it. Now, some cats actually have a hard time feeling if something's too hot, they could, if, they, if they got too close, it could burn, it could burn their skin like very long haired cats don't always feel that intense heat right away. So, you know, supervise, monitor, don't leave a space heater going when you're, when you're not home, make sure that it's really, really sturdy. 
because you don't want the cat to maybe paw at it or inadvertently um, bump into it. He's running around and it falls. So obviously that's a major safety issue. So make sure the mm. space heater is sturdy and make sure when you are running a space heater that um, you're home. I would never leave that on, you know, unsupervised. Many um, older homes, apartments, you know, they're, if they're older, they may be drafty by the windows. So, you know, make sure you um, you can always use um, a towel or a quilt or there's products made that you can put on your window sills or by the door so those um, cold drafts don't get into the house. Because your cat still might want to go on the windowsill or on a perch and look outside even though it's cold out. But, you know, most cats don't want to sit on a cold radiator or a cold windowsill. So do something to sort of keep those drafts out and maybe line the window. Oh, I had a question, oh. Dr. Rachel. Okay. So you mentioned quilts and blankets and all that. And actually it brought to mind something that I have recently discovered, which is uh, a heated blanket, an electric blanket. Now I, I got one because, you know, for, for circulation and whatever, but I haven't used it much <laughs> because the cat seems to like it a lot. Uh, both of them. And um, they don't sleep together, never really have, but uh, on this thing, they will. So, and again, I said it's warmer than I thought it would be. So I'm not currently even needing the thing. It's just folded up at the bottom. Now, is that, uh, should I be doing that? Like, is that a risk? Because I know cats do this whole, the, you know, the kneading thing. So uh, it's an electric blanket with heat elements and whatever going on in there. Yeah. So. Uh, should I be doing that? Is that okay? Uh, yeah. To let them use it. Yeah. As long as, like I said, as long as you're around and you can supervise, um, typically most electric blankets are, are made to withstand, you know, they're with, they're made to withstand use, right? I mean, people are going to be sleeping on them and using them and touching them and folding them and so forth. So mm -hmm. most cats aren't going to get into those electrical filaments by doing their kneading. You can always put something on top of the electric blanket if you, you know, you feel like you you have a cat who might be a little too rough with that kneading, you know, just put something thin on top of it. But typically cats do really like electric blankets and it's okay for them to lay on them and it's okay for them to, you know, spend time on that. And I would I would just say that if you do have a cat who really likes to knead, you know, maybe just put a a sheet over the electric mm -hmm. blanket so they're still getting the heat. There are a lot of um, um, heating beds that come with heat reflectors in the bed. And so they don't involve electricity at all. Once the cat gets into that um, cat bed, the, the technology and the um, heat reflection warm up the cat in that. So that could be something you may want to provide for your cat as well. But there, and there are all different electric blankets out there and some of them are made to be more pet safe you know, or child proof kind of, you know, on the same idea. So yeah, if your cat enjoys the, the electric blanket, as long as, like I said, you're around and you can check that should be fine. Okay, cool. That's a, that's a relief because they, they have, they have been both of them. It's, I, they do. Some just, cats really, really love it. You they know? like it. Yeah. Even yeah. when it's not on, oddly enough, I don't know why they are so attracted to this particular material or whatever is, is a texture or firmness. Or, texture, right. Yeah. You may never like know. It. They just, but they like yeah, it. Yeah, on or not. And it happens yeah. to be uh, the same color as as the as Charlotte's sort of uh, ta uh, orange ginger coloring parts because she's a, a calico. She's, you know, She's got several different colors on her, and that that one matches perfectly to her. So she looks really cute on it, matching the little blanket. And then, yeah. uh, and then the other day, Emily was all nestled in there, like really snuggled in there. So I just, uh, I just, I'm glad I can, I can keep letting them do it. Yes. Uh, cause yeah. Because otherwise, it'd be sort of disappointing for them and for me, really, because I got some lovely pictures of that. <laughs> so, so that's that's that. But the, uh, so we talked about uh, heaters and all that kind of thing. Now, what about the the cold itself, like I, I we, we see lots of pictures uh, on the internet. I mean, at least I do in videos of these beautiful cats outside in the snow. Uh, and sometimes it's just a little cat going around pawing in there. Sometimes it's the big Norwegian forest cat that, you know, with, with, with hair that makes it look like a, a ball of puff and all that. 
Uh, and other times it's a cat that goes in there and it's like, eek, it's t-, and then does like back pedals to get back in. So we see that uh, these these images and videos of cats outside in the snow uh, quite a lot. And it's cute. Uh, but what are the what's the reality of of cats in the snow? I mean, I know they have fur coats and and all of that, but my understanding is a cat uh, kind of originally was more a desert animal as opposed to a uh, tundra or Alaska or Antarctica or whatever. So so what should we be mindful of when we let our cats out in the winter in the snow? Yeah, that's a good question. So right, cats are really desert animals, and so you know they're many of many cats are really not built to be outside in in the winter and in fact you know many cats who live outside in feral colonies or um they're in a caretaker colony many of them don't always make it through the winter because they're just not really made to withstand that um um, severe cold like if it gets really really cold it's, it's hard for a cat to survive so um in general, if it's too cold, <laughs> I love this person. I'm the same way. My house is hermetically sealed. My cats would never be. Allowed. Yeah, yeah. My cats don't yeah. go. Uh, my That's cats are people. never allowed outside. Jennifer, yeah. uh, thank you for that comment. My cats are also not allowed outside yeah. unless they request it, which they do. And I go out with them and I'm like with them the whole time, supervising, watching them, letting them eat a bit of grass in my garden and that kind of thing. But otherwise, you know, we do not, they do not go outside unsupervised or uh, at all ever. There's no cat flap. There's no, there's nothing like that in my house. So yeah, I'm yeah. with you on that. Yeah, uh, yeah, I like to, I maybe I'm overprotective, but that's no, what I like to do. I'm the same way. I get it. I would never let my cats out, but you know, you have an audience out there and there are people who do want to let their cats out and me talking on this podcast is not going to change their minds. So my, so I want to try to make it as safe mm-hmm. as possible, but keep in mind if it's too cold and too painful for you to go out in bare feet, it's going to be too cold and painful for the cat to be, to go out, you know, mm-hmm. in that same, in that same temperature. So kind of use yourself as a barometer. If you would feel really, really uncomfortable and really cold, walking in bare feet, it's the same for the cat. Now, cats who grew up living outside and grew up with this change of seasons, of course, they're going to be a little more, you know, savvy and, and smart about how to how to deal with the cold. But, you know, you never want to let your cat outside for too long, unattended, definitely. If, you're, if you do want to walk a cat on a harness, Again, you know, make sure that you're make don't don't overdo it, I guess, with the with the, the severe cold because your cat's just not going to be happy and he's going to be uncomfortable with that cold on his paws. Cats' paws are very sensitive. Cats are tactile animals and they really feel um, pain when it's really, really cold on their paw pads. So keep mm. that in mind. You know, um, as far as the snow. You know, you can imagine if a cat didn't grow up outside and then went into the snow, you know, a lot of times that we we watch these videos, we interpret it as cute. But, you know, you see a cat digging, you see a cat backing up or running away. That's probably a cat who's actually more scared than, you know, trying to do these little cute things that people enjoy watching on on the video. Um, So just, you know, be safe. Keep that cat on a harness. Don't have the cat out for too long. And. you, you know, most cats don't really tolerate sweaters or things on them. If you have a cat who does, great. I would recommend that. But if you cat who doesn't, which is probably most cats, I limit that time that you're outside. Yeah. So if your cats crave going outside, go ahead, but really do it in small amounts. In yeah. Small amounts. I mean, you wouldn't, if, if you're not going to go out in a bathing suit outside, then maybe, or if you would, because you do the whole um, Iceman thing where you like to, to get a little cold therapy. I know I like to take hot, cold showers where somewhere I do that kind of cold therapy. And it is good for you, to, but it's good for you in small doses. Uh, like uh, my friend, uh, the world famous uh, marketing genius who invented the tracking pixel, among other things, says uh, the other day, on thir- well, yesterday actually, he was saying like, you know, that that kind of 
cold immersion therapy is is very very good for you with a lot of health benefits but if you if you cross that threshold that line just a little bit it could actually become deadly you could get hypothermia you could get you frostbite you can die so it's so it's these things you know maybe you do like to go outside in your underwear uh for your cold therapy however uh, you only do it for a few minutes and then you come back in. And so it would be similar for your cats. You would let them out for a few minutes to just have their little jollies and then just bring them back in so they don't get hurt. They don't get injured. So that's the moral of the story there on that one. And people feel should feel reassured that it's completely fine. There's nothing bad about it. If you just, if you keep your cats inside, um, you know, a lot of people say, oh, they need the fresh air, you know, and so forth. They cats do not mind living their lives inside as long as there is plenty for them to do, you know, stimulation, hunting opportunities, play, vertical space, and so forth. So a cat who's getting that stimulation that he needs and getting those hum hunting opportunities that he needs and getting that opportunity to climb into vertical space, that's what they enjoy what they enjoy outside. So as long as you bring those elements inside, your cats will be just as happy just as secure and a lot safer. So, you know, there's not, there is no downside to keeping cats indoors. I know some people worry about it, but it's completely mm -hmm. fine. Yeah. That's, you know, that's, that's of course what I know. And, and uh, so there's no, <laughs> that's what I've been doing uh, for most of my life is having indoor house cats who really don't go out a lot. Yeah. Um, not exclusive because I live, you know, in a house with a garden and everything. And so I can let them out. Uh, but again, I supervise. I go out with me because the one thing I really uh, find heartbreaking is, is when I go out and this happens every day and I see on a pole or something, a lost cat. Yeah. It makes me very sad when I see that lost cat. And then there's a story around the cat and a number to call and all that. And, and, you know, the, the, the truth is, is, I don't want to ever have to do that uh, with my cats. It really is too sad. So uh, I keep them inside. And again, you know, some people think I'm overprotective and that's fine. Maybe I am. Uh, and maybe I am doing it more for me than for them. But that is the reality of the situation. And even though we, we joke around on the kitty boss and we say, who's the boss, really you or kitty uh, and all of that, you know, the truth is, is um, uh, people say, yeah, the cat is really the, the boss of it, we need to meet halfway. I, I don't believe in teaching people to be complete doormats to their cats. Uh, but I also don't uh, want to teach people to be domineering and completely uh, overwhelm their cats. We need to meet halfway. It's not an animal that is completely subservient and obedient like a dog. It's an animal that is, uh, you know, kind of needy and kind of also, uh, you know, has its own will. Uh, and in fact, uh, the cat's brain has been shown to be very similar in structure and pattern to the human brain. In other words, they feel the full range of emotions. Uh, so whoever it was that, that said uh, uh, cat animals don't feel emotions and don't feel pain and all that uh, was evil, was just pure evil. I think it was Theresa May, actually, the former prime minister of the United Kingdom, but uh, and you know, passed a law on hunting or something like that. But uh, the point is, is that that's evil. It's not true. Animals do have emotions. Animals do feel pain. Uh, and, and the cat in particular has a complex range of emotions, much more aligned with the human. So I'm not saying they're humans. I'm saying, you know, I'm not going that far, but I'm saying they are very, very similar in their patterning in the brain and their complexity of the brain. Of course, it's smaller, but, uh, but it, they do feel emotion. So yeah. A cat is very important, and a cat is very important to meet halfway. But again, it's not that you need to completely, you know, prostrate yourself to the cat and and let it run amok. You can also have your own will <laughs> and be your own person and have your rules and boundaries and all that, and that's perfectly fine. And the cat will be fine with that too. Yes. So that's my lord soapbox moment for <laughs> for the episode about about cats and behavior and our behavior also to the cats so um so that's that one so dr rachel um is there anything that you would like to share in terms of what you would suggest that we do 
the the audience, the listeners do, or the viewers, because some people might be watching this, uh, do for this year as something that they should do. So I know I I sort of committed to more play, mm -hmm. especially with Charlotte, uh, who's here right now, actually sitting underneath the radiator, <laughs> warming her backside. And so, and so um, is there something that you would suggest that us, that we do as our sort of resolutions as opposed to, I mean, we found out yours. Oh, and we have a comment here again from Facebook users. I, I apologize. I don't know who you are again, because you have to click that sort of link that's, that reveals your name, but you, you don't have to, but it's just, I can't find out who you are unless you do that. So having a pet is like a marriage. Both parties have to learn to give in 75% of the time, not even you are saying it will be not even you are saying it will be uh, i'm not sure exactly what that means towards the end there in terms of your your sentence structure but uh but i you're you're right of course <laughs> it is kind of uh like a marriage where where you have to give in abundance and it's not with uh, an expectation it's not a transaction like for business or for work you have to give in abundance of love and love also includes pampering. Love includes the actions that you do. It's not just, oh, I feel it. Yeah, yeah, you communicate it by your actions. Or as a friend of mine says, I love you and I will demonstrate it by my actions. And that's how you need to do it, uh, especially with a cat. So uh, you're right. That's a great comment. Uh, I do need clarification on the last part, which I didn't totally understand, though. So yeah, uh, okay, back to, to Dr. Rachel and what sort of suggestion you have for everyone listening today so um they're my babies yes mine too <laughs> we, I, I love the guests that we have today they're all they're all very very committed and devoted to their cats which of course i like to see so um yeah so i talked about you know adding play into your cat's life and how important that is and i would so if i had my dream i would really like to help people understand that um your cat, cats don't do things out of spite. Cats don't do things out of revenge. Cats don't do things to get back at you. So we just talked about, you know, Justin, you uh, about how um, your cats have many of the emotions that we do. They share many of our emotions. They, they can be hurt. They can grieve. They can love. They can help. They can understand and so forth. Um, it, but there are some things that we humans can proudly call our very own and those feelings are spite and revenge and getting back at you because you th um they're mad at you or they're upset at you so cats do not pee out of the litter box out of spite or revenge your cat is if your cat is going out of the box she's not trying to te um, teach you a lesson or do something back to you because she feels she was affronted in, in some way. This is a huge thing that comes up to for me all of the time is that when a cat doesn't use a litter box, many cat owners feel like this is being done on purpose to teach that person a lesson. I hear so many tales of woe. You know, I went away on vacation, so my cat peed on my luggage because she was mad at me. I did something and, you know, my cat was upset, so she peed on on my shoes. So cats want to use the litter box. Cats are fastidious creatures and would, pre would prefer to use the litter box. So if she's not using the box, it's because something or someone in, in her mind is preventing that cat from using the box. We may not need to do a little detective work to figure that out, but a cat does not pee out of the box to get back at you, to teach you a lesson, or out of revenge. If she's not using the box, it's because something about that box is not meeting her needs and she's solving her problem of still needing to go to the bathroom as a cat. She's thinking things through as a cat. So cats don't understand right or wrong the way we do. You know, they don't, they're not using the box because it's the morally correct thing to do. They're using the box if it meets their needs and they're not using the box if it does not meet their needs. So here I am on my soapbox. It's great to be up here. I'll step down now. But in terms of understanding your cat and having a good relationship with your cat, always think that this is a cat who's going to solve problems or 
fix something that's not going on so right in her life or show you emotion as a cat. Okay, that's really cool. So uh, we have a comment, uh, which I guess reveals who this person is. Mark G, I think you know him because he's addressing you, Dr. Rachel. He says, there is a period separating the last two sentences. Not even you are saying it will be. In the end, it will even out. Okay, so I know Mark. Yes. Mm -hmm. And he is a huge cat lover and huge advocate for cats. And I've known Mark for a long time. But um, I also know him through volunteering. He's volunteered at some of the shelters that I've worked with. He's attended some of my cat behavior events. And um, he is a another person who's very devoted to cats in general, whether it's his own cats or helping organizations that rescue cats or, um, you know, just kind of being in general a cat advocate. So, yes, Um that is Mark. Hi, Mark. Yeah, so so I think I understand better. Thank you for explaining that, Mark G. Uh, it's not even, you are saying. Uh, it doesn't have to be 50-50. It's 75-70. And it doesn't have to be, you know, perfect uh, match. It just has to be, in my view, uh, in abundance. You give in abundance. It's not, You're not looking for a transaction anyway. And it will, in the end, it'll even out. Uh, but even if it doesn't, it doesn't matter. It's just it's in the okay. end, it will it will be what is best for everyone concerned, as long as you approach it from that that sort of giving and loving way. Uh, and then we have uh, Jennifer who's coming in with my cat snubs me whenever she sees me packing a suitcase. <laughs> so so that again that might is probably not spite or being nasty. That's probably more like uh, she's a bit. Uh, anxious because she knows yes. you're going to be absent uh for a period of time yes. now, i did have a question actually for um dr rachel which is that uh when i um one time went to go visit my mom and i uh stayed for i think it was four days or something and i normally don't really stay away for more than two two nights but this time i stayed for longer when i came home there was a, a little uh, dookie, <laughs> a little, just one, just one. Little, everything else was in the litter box, uh, but there was just one little piece in the center of, of my bed, which is also where the cats sleep. They, they like to sleep up towards the foot end. They don't normally go towards that center part uh, unless they're cuddling with me or lying on top of me. But there was in the center of the bed, a little, you know, a little Hershey's kiss. And, I'm wondering, that was not, you know, spite or anything, but it did seem to be a message because they had never, ever done that before. They've never done that since. Uh, and it was just strange, but also like, so I kind of did take that as a message saying, you know, don't stay away so long next time kind of thing. So yeah. I'm not sure how uh, you'd interpret that particular thing, because it could potentially be, of course, uh, Emily at that time was also, they, they were both feeling anxiety because I wasn't there. And so she yeah. was blocking her from using the litter box or whatever, or, or the other one. And so she ended up pooping on the bed or whatever. But again, they had never done that before, nor since. And so it, it and it was perfectly centered. So it did kind of seem like a hint. Yeah, that I'm really glad you asked that question. That's a great question. So your cat wasn't spitefully getting back at you, right? But here's the thing. Cats, do not like change. Cats like pre predictability. Your cat's perfect day would be, your perfect cat, cat's perfect life would be if every day you woke up at the same exact time, you know, fed them at the same time, never left the house. You're like, whatever happened in your life was very regimented and the same thing happened every day. Now, cats feel extremely vulnerable in their litter boxes. This is like really important to understand that pooping position is the, the, the most vulnerable position. So if you were away and your cats were scared or your cats were anxious, they may not want to get into that litter box because they're in a very vulnerable position. They can't see around them as easily. They're not um, able to have a quick um, escape route. You know, they, they, they realize when they're in there that potential for escape is very 
low, you know, because they're in that pooping position. So more likely it was that um, your cat was scared, your cat was feeling stressed, your cat was feeling fear, your cat was feeling anxiety, you're gone. And, and that period of time where usually you come back wasn't happening. So they were afraid. So now think about the bed um, as opposed to using the litter box. In the middle of the bed there, your cat has a clear visual field. She has lots of ample um, warning if there was going to be something scary happening, if there was a predator, if there was um, you know, just something that it diff was different in her life and is freaking her out. So elevation is a great place for a cat who, to go when she's feeling fear and stressed. She's on that bed. She has plenty of um, war visual warning time should something happen. So it's a very safe place for a cat to poop when she's afraid or feeling anxious or feeling anxiety. So it, it you know, it wasn't revenge. She wasn't doing that to because she was mad at mm -hmm. you. It was more she was afraid. Um, you were gone longer than she thought. She didn't want to put herself in that vulnerable position because maybe whatever took you might take her. So there's a whole thing around, um, you know, safety, vulnerability when it comes to litter box issues. And cats, you know, this is part of being a cat behaviorist. So if your cat didn't go on the top of the bed, I might have a different answer for you. But any when cats seek out elevation, it's because they're now feeling a little afraid to get into that pooping position in the box. She can't quite put her finger on it. She really can't get to the source of her fear, but she's feeling afraid. You're not there. Her days are different. Her routines are different. Mm -hmm. Her schedule is different. You see where I'm going. And so she's afraid. She wants to go to a place where she can see all the way around her easily. That's yeah. a very safe place for a cat to poop. <laughs> Especially my bed because it's a it's a it's a large king size bed uh, at the pretty much what's the apex of the house because I I live I have three floors and my bedroom is on the top floor at the very end so it really pretty much is the ape I mean there's an attic but you can't get to it so it's locked it's blocked off but so my bedroom is pretty much the apex of the entire house yeah, so uh, and it's a big place. big bed so yeah. There's, That's a great place for a scared or stressed out cat to poop. Yeah, a great <laughs> place to take a dump. Uh, right. Thanks. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Mark G says, nobody knows the way of the cat better than Dr. G. Dr. Geller, of Rachel Geller, of course, you're right, Mark. Thank you for saying that. That's great uh, feedback testimonial for uh, Dr. G, uh, I would, if I were you, use that in my marketing, uh, Dr. Geller, because that really, really is is a great thing. So from from Mark G, nobody knows the way of the cat better than Dr. G. So that is that is your new sort of uh, maybe your new motto uh, or strap line or whatever. And then Jennifer comes in with that helps. I had a similar situation. Now I understand exactly. Okay. Me too. That's why. We do this every month because yeah. there's always sort of a aha or a or a moment every single episode uh, with Dr. Geller. So uh, thank you very much, Jennifer, for your uh, comment feedback uh, for Dr. Geller. I agree that is uh, that really helps. I was uh, seriously considering it in a different light up until we just talked about it now. So so thank you very much, Dr. Geller. That does help me, me too, as well as you can see, it helps several uh, of our listeners or, well, I guess they're viewers today watching it as we're doing this live. So yeah, awesome. I, yeah, I appreciate it. And, and, and I, I don't think I can uh, be 100% certain which cat did it. Uh, I believe it was Charlotte, but I don't know. I can't know for sure because I wasn't here. Yeah. I just saw the do on the bed when I got back. So, uh, so that was that so uh but it, regardless of which one did it we kind of know why we kinda, yeah. Yeah. you know and i did have the fell away plugged in i did everything i could possibly think of to to minimize their sort of stress and anxiety while i was away but uh did you have I somebody don't... come in like a pet a yes. sitter or a cat sitter Mine? yes yes i had uh my friends come in yeah uh who love the cats and the cats love them they play with them and all that so they actually did come in to feed and 
and do the litter boxes and everything. So, yeah. so it wasn't like they were alone or, you know, or the house yeah. was empty or anything. There was yeah. somebody here on a daily basis. So That's like I said, I did everything I could think of. I don't use catteries. So, I, so putting them up in a, in a little cattery would not be an option for me. So yeah. uh, no, I, don't, just, I don't believe yeah. in those. I don't like them. I'm scared of them. So yeah. I'm sure there's some really good ones out there, but no, thanks. Uh, Jennifer come, has also said, I have a kitty cam Ooh, uh, and talk to them when I'm gone. Oh, that's pretty cool. Actually. I like that. I've never heard of that. I mean, I've heard of people setting up like various devices so that they can spy on their cats uh, when they're away. And there's some pretty funny videos also uh, with that, but I didn't know that there was a sort of a setup that you could have where you can actually talk to them when you're away. So Jennifer, if you can share that with us in the Kitty Boss Facebook group, not here, because here I won't get to see it or I won't have time to look at it, uh, and then it'll eventually probably disappear. But if you could just do a post on it for us in the in the group and share uh, the a link to the product or a picture of it or anything you you have time to do, uh, I would love to find out what that is because I think I'd like one of those. For me, I never heard of such things. So yeah, there are cameras and yeah. products, and since she recommends it, where you you can hear your cat, you can talk to your cat. It's mm -hmm. it's really, um, you know, for some cats that really helps. And again, I know one thing that you're always great at is letting people know that there are a low cost ways to do things. Mm -hmm. If if you can't afford, you know, a kitty cam camera setup, um, leave your lights on timers have a radio playing softly, you know, do things to create signs of life in your home, even though you're not there. So Which is a good like idea that. anyway, to keep uh, sort of burglars and prowlers away. I have my lights on a timer mostly for that versus for uh, like uh, the cats actually. Cause I, I just, you know, don't want anybody to have the impression the house is empty for a week or whatever yeah. uh, and think, Oh, perfect time to burgle. Mm -mm. <laughs> So uh, never burgle this house because you will not survive. And <laughs> that's a whole story, uh, which, which uh, I have a friend who does security services. So uh, you burgle this house, you're not you're not going to live through that one. So uh, so that's a, that's, that's a whole other morbid story. Uh, Justin can be very scary uh, if, he, if he needs if, if he's threatened if, or if his cats or, or his loved ones are threatened, he can be very, very scary. But um but anyway, so uh, so the kitty cam is something I am interested in just because what uh, when I'm gone, when I'm gone, I need it for me, not for the cats. Because when I'm gone, I miss them. I could be with my mother and still be thinking and missing my cats tremendously. Yeah. And then and even even if, you know, Hayden or Stephanie, my friends who watch them will send pictures and videos of the cats and all that. And I'm still like, oh, my baby, my baby, where? <laughs> I'm still missing them. And then um, and so uh, a kitty cat would be like, cool. The only thing I'd worry about is I'd spend too much time obsessing over it when I'm supposed to be with loved ones or friends or something on a on a, t a trip away. But uh, but I'd still be interested to explore the option of getting a kitty cam just yeah. to see what I would do when I'm, let's say, just in town for coffee and I miss my cats or something like that. And I just have to check in with them, even though I've only been gone for 20 minutes. So, yeah, share that if you can, if you have time to do that, Jennifer, I'd really appreciate it. Yeah, that, I mean, a lot of shelters um, use that technology, too, so people can maybe watch the kittens or things like that. Mm. So, yeah, I mean, it's a great idea. And yes, as long as you can control yourself and not spend the whole time. <laughs> yeah. That's a whole other webinar. Um, That's a whole yeah. other Oprah, a whole other, you need, or Dr. <laughs> Phil, maybe even that you need some help. You know, uh, there, there is a there is a video game that uh, is available. And I'm not a gamer, but there is a video game uh for uh, a bunch of systems, I've seen it on PlayStation Five called Stray. <laughs> now, if I, now I have played it, I I, I I I got a copy, and and I it's fantastic. It's a cat. You're you're a cat. Uh, there's moments in the game that are kind of like you make me want to cry, but then it's not it's not that bad, you know. But it's just it's just it's such a good game. You play the cat, you know. You do cat things. But it's more like a like a sci-fi type of adventure with the cat. So it's actually really, really cool. So even like though I'm not a gamer, I do really like the game Stray. If anyone has, if anyone is a gaming type person, I do recommend that. If you're a gamer and you like cats, this one will be like out of the world, out of this world for you. It's very, very well done, realistic and cool. And the adventure is kind of interesting. And uh the story behind it is interesting. And I just 
I'm just a, a real fan of the game. Uh, we only have a couple minutes left. So before we end uh, today's episode, Dr. Rachel, is there anything you would care to say or ask? Well, I'm going to just, again, wish everybody a happy 2023. And I'm going to end my part by saying, you know, think about the resolutions we talked about today, the play, and, you know, kind of understanding your cat a little bit better. And if you don't have a cat, maybe consider adopting a cat. If you don't have the, you know, ability right now to adopt, consider volunteering at a shelter um, or um, donating to a shelter because there's so many ways that we can help the cats in our lives and the cats in the, in the world without only having to be mm -hmm. an owner. So, um, you know, think about those shelters, those rescues who are usually understaffed and, and need help. And maybe you can um, do something with cat advocacy and cat welfare in a different way than, you know, having a cat yourself, if that's something you can't do right now. Definitely. There's always a way. And yes. uh, even if you can only take uh, a, an hour a week to go volunteer somewhere, that's already a wonderful thing that you're doing, uh, not just for cats, but for your own spiritual involvement as well. Uh, you know, most religions teach uh, uh, something to do with that sort of giving uh, of your time or of your money or of, of your whatever it is. They Most religions teach that good karma or mitzvah or add to it whatever label you want in whatever language it is it's almost a universal concept of that uh selfless giving that brings back to you spiritual benefits emotional benefits much far beyond what you've given or donated uh so consider doing that because you'll benefit from it but uh at, you know at the the bottom line is is it's really uh really really important uh i wanted to end up by inviting everybody to go to the kittyboss.com t h e k i t t y b o s s.com the kittyboss.com i threw up a landing page it's nothing elaborate it's nothing i i don't want you to go there and think oh my god it's amazing it's not it's not that but i've put up a landing page so you can drop your email address in there and i promise not to turn your inbox into a litter box i am not going to spam you on a daily basis i hate that uh, but when there's something positive and pertinent to share, I will share it with you. When the book, The Kitty Boss, is published finally, I will share that with you. When the One Cat Away course is finally published, I will announce that to you and share that with you so you can share it with people. If you remember, the mission that I'm on behind all of the gimmicks is to help a million more cats get adopted. And of course, the flip side to that is all those lonely people to have a lifetime of unconditional love in their lives. So uh, I care about you, but I care about cats more. So I think it's it would be really appreciated to sign up to that particular email list because it's not going to be a spammy one, but it will be a positive one. And it will, of course, help us on that mission uh, as well. So it's the kittyboss.com. You just pop your email address in there. And of course, there is an offer in there that I will, that you get this sort of free book. But I'm assuming that most people that are listening here are, are not, uh, are actual already cat owners with experience. And this is almost the ascent, the 10 essentials guide, uh, which is for, only for new cat owners. Because as I said, a million more cats getting adopted, I need more people to realize they can have a cat. So I've made a sort of a, a, the simplicity of simplicities, the 10 things. Uh, so you probably don't need that, but you know I'll, I'll still send it to you for free if you want it. But uh, but that's that. But the, the important thing is just to be on the list so we can start sharing this information uh, beyond just a you know simple social media. Uh, so to end the call, I have a wonderful comment. Thanks, learned a lot today, oh, and that's wonderful because uh, it's good to know because that's why we're here. We're not here to just simply uh, feed our egos. We are here to entertain you. We are here to also help enlighten you or educate you with some helpful tips, tools, techniques, tricks, having to do with our cats to make cats uh, have a better life, to pick, pamper, and protect your practically perfect pussycat for a lifetime of unconditional love. So Dr. Rachel, thank you very much for joining me uh, for the first episode of 2023. Next month, is of course february which is valentine's day so we will focus all around love and 
That's all I'm going to say about that. That's and do not miss episode. Don't miss it. You do not want to miss that episode where we talk no, this all is about love. Viewing. Must see viewing. <laughs> so thank you very much for joining me, Dr. Rachel. You're welcome. And uh, have a wonderful uh, rest of January, and I'll see you next month. And for everybody watching, thank you for tuning in. This is Cat Lady Justin, and you're listening or watching The Kitty Boss.